Ting is a private sector uh, fiber network provider. It's a 20-year-old internet company. We do a lot of great things, uh, domain registrations. We have wholesale internet platforms. We uh, have been rated this past year and in 2014 as the top mobile provider in the United States. And two years ago, we also got into building networks, uh, fiber networks. Our very first fiber network is in Charlottesville, Virginia. We also provide, we're also one of the ISPs that provide service on both the RANA network and on the NCBA network. But first, um, first I, I know we've heard a lot about uh, the social justice of access to internet, but I'd like to talk a little bit about it from the perspective of the private sector internet provider that's not an incumbent telco or cable company. First of all, fiber to the premise is really an, in an inevitable network topology. It's infrastructure that will one day be in every home, every business and every government building. Copper's had a great 140 year run, but its reliability and capacity are limited, as is wireless. Today's data demands are voracious and growing exponentially. Forecasting future speed, capacity, and reliability needs leads only to one possible conclusion, that fiber is the only medium by a long shot that will do the job. But building fiber networks is expensive like any infrastructure in the past. When Ting scouts new locations, we have many eager cities that we're able to partner with, those that are willing to work productively together and have skin in the game. And by skin in the game, I mean cities that have municipal fiber assets that they've built that we can leverage and build out from, or that we can offer services across, like we do on a network in Westminster, Maryland, and like we do with the NCBA, NCBA and RANA networks. When we build a network, we invest millions of dollars in the community. The primary investment is in the infrastructure that will create direct positive impacts on the city's economy, including job growth, including higher business productivity, and increased numbers of startups and home businesses locating to the area. We also employ a lot of people, provide great jobs, rent office space, and take out lots of local advertising. So I would challenge legislators and aides here do you want to prevent your cities from the potential of this type of investment <coughs> from an outside company? Do you want to hobble economic growth in your represented, represented communities to stifle innovation, make those communities a less appealing place to live and for businesses to locate? This bill props up a handful of overpriced telco and cable monopoly companies at the expense of potential growth for every other industry and every other company that's operating in the region. It's a regressive legislation that will harm your communities and those and your constituents. Now I'm just going to give a quick anecdote from a personal perspective. I have a home in western Massachusetts that's been for sale for three years. Uh, it's in a rural area without broadband. It's a lovely place, just like Virginia, with mountains, rivers, lakes, and great culture. But the area is losing population, it's losing jobs, and in 2010 we lost our congressional seat. Schools have closed. I've had to relocate to an area with better broadband in order to do my job effectively. Yesterday, a national broadband expert referred to the lack of broadband in Western Massachusetts as killing the rural towns of Western Mass. So today, I employ the electeds here as stewards of the communities in the Commonwealth of Virginia to ensure the only thing that is killed on your watch is this punitive bill. Now I'd like to pass this over to uh, Steve, Senator Wayne.